Um, All right, we can go ahead, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, Wayne might be a few minutes late, so in the meantime, um, Bill, you're the vice chair. If you want to open up the meeting, please. Thank you. Uh, what's the first on the agenda? Does anyone have any agenda amendments? Hearing none, I'll just no, note. No. That I, <laughs> all right, hearing none, I'll just note um, one quick thing. Um, I wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of two new committee members. One is our council liaison, Steve Lindos. He's on the call today. And then our newest one from Ward 2 is um, Jay Philippi, and he was just appointed by council on Monday, so he wasn't able to join us today. Um, but he should hopefully be at the next meeting. So just welcome to our new members. Oh. Okay. It, and it looks like we have a, another caller on the line. Wayne, is that you? Okay, I'm not sure if that's Wayne or not. We can't hear you, um, but we'll go ahead and move on to approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve the November 13th minutes? This is Steve Lindos. I'll move approval. I'll second. We'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And then any citizens to be heard on items not on the agenda? Hearing none, I think we're on to our first item, which is project updates. And I'll just note that um, the apron and runway pavement and lighting project has been completed this year. The taxiway project is anticipated to conclude next year. Um, and then a couple of things that were on your past agenda. We did complete the disadvantaged business enterprise goal for the airport. So that entire policy document and goal is on the city's website under the airport page if you'd like to take a peek at that. And then a couple of additional project updates. The airport did receive $30,000 in CARES funding for airport maintenance and operations. And it's also anticipated that the federal CARES funding will also um, match the local match for the taxiway project so that's really great and then also just a shout out to marvin fletcher who is constructing a new private hangar out at the airport and that's all of the updates that i had Any questions on that item? Hearing none, we could move on to the aeronautical zoning discussion, if that's okay with the commission. So I wanted to include this in your packet for discussion today. I wanna to preface this by saying we do not need a decision today, um, but the information starts on page four of your packet. 
Um, in summary, MnDOT has new rules that are requiring an airport's airport layout plan to be consistent with MnDOT aeronautical zoning. An aeronautical zoning is not required by the FAA. It's specifically a MnDOT regulation. The city's current aeronautical zoning ordinance for the airport was approved in 1996 when the airport was originally constructed and based on that airport layout plan. So now it is not consistent with the ALP because of the addition of the crosswind runway and the runway extension. So we reached out to the city attorney and um, he provided us some guidance on um, aeronautical zones, um, which include A, B, and C. Um, zone A are the most restrictive non-building zones that are on the ends of the runway. Um, zone B are also at the end of the runway, but further from, from zone A. And there are some parameters and some uses allowed in zone B. And then zone C is more of a circular zone around the entire airport. And that does not have the same restrictions, building restrictions as zone A and B. And so we got some information from the city attorney on whether or not specifically those zones A and B would require compensation. Um, and then we also asked our city real estate staff and some of our planning staff to prepare a very preliminary analysis of what those zoning acquisition costs related to the crosswind runway and the runway extension might be. I do wanna emphasize that these are very preliminary and if we do go the route of pursuing these, they could, they could change. <laughs> I'm getting swatted by Bill. <laughs> Only on virtual meetings. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> so on page five of your packet, you will see um, sort of in the middle of the page what some of those, prelim again, preliminary estimates for the zoning districts might be. Um, the preliminary costs include approximately $120,000 for zoning related costs for the crosswind runway and approximately 212,000 for zoning related costs. Um, I'm sorry, the 120 was for the runway extension and then the 212,000 is for the crosswind runway. Uh, there would be an additional about 380,000 for property acquisitions, which are different than the zones. So that kind of gives you a very preliminary working estimate of what it looks like if we were to pursue an update to our zoning ordinance based on the current ALP. I wanna note that there uh, is no state or federal funding grants for zoning easement acquisitions like these. Uh, MnDOT does participate in property acquisitions for clear zone areas as funding is available um, but they do not participate in any zoning easement acquisitions. So I wanted to throw some options out for the committee to consider. Again, we don't have to finalize this today. We can bring it into the November meeting to give you some time to think about, you know, potential next steps and options. So the first option would be no change to the current air airport layout plan which again shows the crosswind runway and the runway extension. It would take about three to five years to build up some of those potential costs for the easement acquisitions. And we would also then be working on a new zoning ordinance. Um, I do want to just be upfront and noting that this would likely not allow for some of the other airport projects giving, given the, just the general um, capital improvement funding options that are available through the city and the limitations on those. So it might impact other projects. There's the potential. The other option would be to consider a revision to the ALP. Um, you could consider revising the ALP to either remove the crosswind and or the runway extension so that you did not have to change the, zone, the zoning ordinance and get the zoning easements from the property owners. Um, so if one of these is removed, um, say you only remove the runway extension, but keep, keep the crosswind or vice versa, you'd still need to revise the zoning ordinance. Um, so there would, you'd still have to go through that zone, aeronautical zoning process, but the cost would be slightly less because you'd have less land area. 
if both of them are Okay, sorry about that. Um, so if if one is removed, there would still be an, a need for a new zoning ordinance and some potential easement costs. If both are removed, I would not anticipate the need for a new ordinance because our current ordinance matches um, what we have on the ground um, and there would be no zoning related easement costs. The current capital improvement plan that we have into MnDOT starts on page eight. These are a little bit wonky because we can't update some of the things on their system, but you can kind of see some of the long-term planning that we have been working on over the past two years within this plan. And so as it relates to the runway extension, um, this is a, a process that would likely take few years, if not more, to complete. Um, it isn't something that you can just get funded. Um, the FAA and MnDOT require um, studies and analysis that, that, that you're required to show that is, it's in fact needed and not just something that you want. And so Mead and Hunt a few years ago when we initially discussed this had, had done a report on what that might look like. So that is on page 10 of your packet if you want to take a peek at that. And then, of course, the crosswind runway, um, it's on the current airport layout plan, but it is not currently funded in our capital improvement plan, which right now is going through 2043. So um, I'll leave my comments to that and really interested in any preliminary thoughts that the committee has. If there's any other options that you'd like staff to explore. Um, or anything that we might be able to provide for the next meeting as we continue our discussion on what our next steps might be for this. Is our benefit to extending the runway uh, extension, the current runway? Other than bigger planes, I mean, is it gonna, is it going to hinder us in any other manner other than getting in larger airplanes? So you all are probably much more adapt to talking about this than I am. Um, but what I'll note is that when the ALP was under review back in 2010, the desire was actually to go to 5,000 feet, but going to 5,000 feet changes the aeronautical clear zones around the runway and, and other avionic operating areas to the point where you'd have to remove multiple buildings. And so at that point, um, the FAA and MnDOT both did not allow the ALP to show that 5,000 foot runway. And that's how it got to that 4,850 foot length that it's shown on the ALP right now. Um, from what I understand, and I could be incorrect on this, um, the the 5,000 feet really changes um, the aircraft that can operate on an airport. I'm not sure how much more benefit you get with the 4,850 feet. So, and again, even if we did want to pursue the runway extension to the 4,850, you do have to provide a number of environmental and justification reports um, before the FAA would consider funding that. So um, there are steps that you need to have that you don't necessarily have with something like um, a new taxiway for private hangars or pavement rehabilitation or a new hangar. You don't necessarily have those steps with those that you have for a runway extension. 
Yeah. Oh, this runway extension. Uh, can you hear me? Go this ahead, is, Walt. Oh, okay. The the runway extension presumably would allow us to attract speedier airplanes like biz jets or something like that. Is that uh, the thought behind that? Uh, yeah. And the and the cross, the cross, the crosswind runway. Would that be a north south, or what would the directions be on that? I haven't got that right away. That is correct. The crosswind would be a north south orientation. Okay, so that would uh, allow if the well, you'd have more choices then with the wind direction. But uh, if we could only do one, either the extension or the crosswind, uh, which would be more useful, do you think? Crosswind. The crosswind. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's my thinking. Does the airport extension, Christy, does that affect the private hangars that are in the front row there on the ramp? As far as the clear zones, um, I don't believe so. You go 5,000 feet, is it affected, does it affect the the hangars, the private hangar buildings that are currently in place. It it does, and the FAA and MnDOT will not allow us to put five thousand feet on the ALP. It's a non-subject. Yeah. Forty, fifty, we could do five thousand. We couldn't. But I'm thinking pro or if we had a crosswind runaway, then more people would be willing to move over here from Fargo. Yeah, crosswind runway would make a whole lot more sense than the extension, which is going to affect other items. One of the things that we were thinking about, um, if the committee is interested, is we could do, um, you know, a survey of some of our airport users and just see, you know, kind of where they're at and if, if it, either of these would be of interest to them. Um, again, it would be, you know, a committee and council decision on what direction to take. But if we are looking for um, any input from our, you know, current hangar users, land lease holders, uh, we could certainly send out maybe a really quick survey um, and, and get some input before that November, next November meeting, if the committee is interested. Um, I'll just note that changing the ALP is doable, um, but it's not an easy process. So I just wanna make sure that any any feedback, any information that the committee would like to make this determination, you know, please let us know um, because it isn't something that you can easily change and go back. Um, once you change it, it, it takes multiple months, if not over a year, um, and it's not something that's easy to change back. So we just wanna make sure that we're being very thoughtful. Um, and and I, would, I, I support anything the airport committee is looking to do and would gladly take that to council, but any feedback that you'd like from other users or any other research you'd like us to do, please let us know. Uh, Christy, this is Wayne. Uh, I. Uh... I had trouble connecting the, the audio here, so I was a little late on hearing what was going on. Could you just give me a, a short dump of what's going on? Will do. We're talking about the aeronautical zoning. 
we we now are under mandate by MnDOT that our airport layout plan and our aeronautical zoning document need to be consistent. Right now, our aeronautical zoning document is based on the original airport layout, and so it does not include the crosswind runway and the runway extension. If we amend the aeronautical zoning ordinance, it will require the um, the city obtaining aeronautical zoning easements for certain zones um, within that document. And so we have a preliminary analysis in the packet on page five of what some of those easement costs might be. And so what we're looking to do now is get any feedback from the committee on, um, you know, sort of that the, the benefit of of keeping one, both, or none of the crosswind and runway extension within the ALP in pursuing those zoning changes, or if we want to potentially change the airport layout plan that would eliminate some of the zoning changes. And we do not need to make the decision today. I'm just looking to get any feedback from the committee today or any further information or analysis that you would like, and we can talk about this again in November. Okay. That, uh, that makes sense, I guess. Uh, I've always uh, had hope that this uh, airport would grow some. It was initially, in my opinion, uh, hamstrung by design here a little bit. So if we can uh, fix some of that by zoning and getting that so we don't eliminate that potential for us, I would like to see that. I should have also noted that neither the FAA nor MnDOT participates in funding easements. So it would be a 100% a local share. And they are, um, the, the potential estimates for those are on page five of your packet. It, it would include potentially 120,000 of easement acquisitions for the extension and about 212,000 for the crosswind runway. So those are only estimates for the aeronautical easements. And that could impact future projects at the airport if we were pursuing the easements as opposed to the projects. Okay. Certainly a very more discussion. Hopefully we could do it in a more uh, discuss discussion uh, prone environment here hopefully soon. So before the November meeting, is there anything that the committee would like to see um, as far as additional information on this item goes? I, I would I would like to see uh, you know what the easements consist of, what we're what we're buying for that easement, and uh, and uh, any further information that's available. I like that, and uh, and just uh, somewhere along the way, if we're that, this seems to be an important issue, and uh, just somewhere along the way before uh, or to have a serious discussion, uh, I don't know, you know, with meeting laws and so on. I don't know. It sounds like we got a lot to talk about. I would think. I don't know, I'll, but uh, if we can't have a, if we need to decide on November's meeting, then uh, then we need to perhaps have a special meeting or something to uh, discuss this one particular project. I think it's I think it's important. And we don't necessarily have to have a decision in November as well. Uh, MnDOT just wants us to make sure that we're reporting progress and that we're working on it. OK. Fair enough, then that would work. We'll make sure at the next meeting to include easement areas so you can sort of visualize them. Um, any other comments or information we could get for the committee? 
This is Steve Lindos, Christy. Um, there's a lot of um, information here. I'm, I'm also just digesting. Um, I guess when I look at this, um, being new to this committee and stuff, um, one of the questions I always have is, okay, I, I see the cost for the, um, essentially doing the, the cross um, uh, extension, or not the extension, but the cross. But you know, kind of the what are, what are the opportunities for, you know, the uh, getting funding from other agencies? I guess that's one of my questions. Is you know, and it, it might be really obvious to a lot of other people, but um, ultimately, that that's and I agree. Um, it sounds like you know, it, having um, more opportunities for people to land in different weather conditions um, makes it safer and then a more attractive airport. So that's like a good um, uh, one to focus on. That's a great question as far as the funding goes. Um, we have essentially um, two options for funding as it relates to the FAA. We receive $150,000 per year of entitlement funding from the FAA, and we can build that up a maximum of four years. So once you hit that four year number of the 600,000, you have to spend it, otherwise you lose year one. So it really limits the ability of what airports can do just given the cost of projects and infrastructure nowadays. The other pot of money is discretionary funds and we received those for some of the pavement work that we've been doing at the airport. Again, cause those are you know over million dollar projects. And that is um, national competitive funding. And so it's it's um, more difficult to get, but not impossible. Um, and it it's sort of an unknown, like you you put it on your CIP and you hope for it, but again, it's it's not guaranteed, like we often think of as the entitlement funding, that yearly pot that we get every year. So so that discretionary funding is competitive but we work very closely with our FAA representatives whenever we have a project that requires it to make sure that it's on their radar and that they're working for us to get that money. Uh, is it a proper question to ask at the payments on the ramp out here? Uh, there are lawsuits involved. Is it uh, getting uh, funds being extended at all? We have received information from the contractor that our attorney is reviewing. All right, so if there's no further discussion on aeronautical zoning for now, we'll include a few extra um, pieces within your next packet um, on that item. And we can move on to um, item number seven, which is election of 2020 officers. Uh, we currently have Wayne serving as chair and Bill serving as vice chair and looking for the committee to make appointments for um, well, now it's almost done with 2020. So I guess we'll say 2020 and 2021. This is 
Phil? Was that you wanting to be chair? <laughs> I'm going to go for chair. It was somebody else using my voice. No. <laughs> I'm sure there are others that uh, are more experienced and have a lot more idea what's going on from day to day than I would. And the fact that Mike says I'm out here the other day complaining and bitching about something. There you go. Well, there's a few options. Um, the committee could consider um, keeping the current chair and vice chair, albeit maybe against their will. Um, or we could move this to November if anyone, you know, would rather think about it and and might want to volunteer for the position. So I'll leave it to the committee to see what what options might be um, most favorable. Good idea. Leave it until November. We'll see if Jay wants to be in. It would be nice if we could have separation and a place. A lot of us. The acting no, city manager is currently working on a potential location. Yeah, there's plenty of room in our lobby. Important feet apart. There's places that we have to go to have a meeting uh, that have separation. So somewhere along the way, we should be able to do that. Yeah, between uh, Morehead Aviation Services has a lobby and two large hangars that we can be 60 feet apart in one of them if we wanted to be. So basically we are offering our facilities. Thank you. I'll I'll check with administration. We are we are um, you know working under an emergency order with all of our committees. So I just want to make sure that we're being consistent. Um, do we have? I know that the fly-in was canceled, but does any Wayne or Kim? Does anyone have anything that you want to add on that as a as a final note for 2020? Not not for 2020. Uh, just. Uh, you know, hopefully next year we can uh, start off better again here and, and try and get this. Uh, it's always enjoyable. We got the last we kind of had a little trouble with weather there for the young eagles and so on. So uh, just uh, and I, you know, some more ideas for the parade and all that stuff, which wasn't held this year either. So just uh, kind of come out bigger and better than ever. Thank you, Wayne. Um, any updates from Moorhead Aviation reports and fuel reports? Well, now that we have a ramp and a runway, we'll probably sell more fuel. You know, the issue with the lights, I talked to Greg from Rick Electric today. He's going to try to coordinate with the uh, lighting company and come out tomorrow. Mike, this is Jeff. What is the lights on the runway? If you wake up during the day, everything is good, but they're on full bright at night, and the rails are on flashing constantly. Should be on dim and then shut off. But you can't control it. You can click all you want at, when the night and they just stay bright. Okay. I'll reach out to Joel too, um, who helped with the 
for installation. Any other comments from the committee? After the building itself, the electrical building, Chris, that to be addressed sooner than later. Uh, whether we move the whole building, if that's what's going to happen, to you know rewire everything and move the building to the new location. Uh, the building's in really in poor shape. We've talked about it here, and we I probably have mentioned it to you, but. That building is uh, a help. Yep, so at the November meeting, we're going to be taking another look at the CIP, which we do each year. And I have the electrical equipment building and a potential new beacon um, on the on the agenda for that. Okay, good, thank you. All right, if there's no other comments from the committee, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I make a motion. All right, thanks everybody. Bye. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Kristen. Thank yeah, my you. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Still, uh, can't even figure out who's who here yet, but anyhow, thank you.